Good afternoon, everybody. Sorry we're coming on a little bit late. Uh, I am again taking up my quest to find geology of western Kansas, and this time I was in search of Fort Hayes limestone. And um, well, we drove around, and I thought I knew where I was going, but I couldn't find an outcrop that was accessible. Um, so I found the next best thing. Uh, we are actually at Old Fort Hayes in Fort Hayes, Kansas. And this is the uh, block house, one of the standing buildings that still remain from the original fort. And if you look closely, it is built from Fort Hayes limestone. So what Fort Hayes limestone represents is deep marine environment. It is part of the Niobrara Formation, so it's the lower section of the Niobrara Formation. Uh, it is overlaid by the uh, Smoky Hill Formation, or the Smoky Hill Member, rather, um, which is uh, where a lot of our big fossils come from, and we'll, we'll go in search of that some other day. I don't know that it'll be tomorrow, but we'll definitely go in search of some Smoky Hill Formation or Smoky Hill member, Smoky Hill Chalk member of the, of the Niagara, Niagara Formation. Formation. So um, what we're looking at here is material that was actually quarried just west of this location uh, in outcrops of the Fort Hayes limestone. So if you look, it's very yellow. It's very, um, there's chunks of fossil in here. I see chunks of fossil clams. Uh, you also have people carving their names in into the building over the years. Um, you know what else I see that's cool? What do you see that's cool? We have trace fossils. <laughs> Look at, we got burrows here. Oh yeah. Right here. And then if you come way down here, look, at, you got all kinds of burrows. Do -do 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 -do. All popping yeah, out. I was thinking you were talking about the anthropomorphic. <laughs> no, we traces. got, we got real, well, so we've got, we got ancient trace fossils and burrows. And yes, we do have the anthropomorphic trace fossils. So well, actually head back down to that, uh, that chunk of stone that you were looking at. <sighs> so one of the things about Fort Hayes limestone that turned out to be a kind of a, a bummer for the, the soldiers that built the fort and those that followed later on is it turns out that Fort Hayes limestone uh, is pretty dissolvable <laughs> once it's quarried and especially when it comes in contact with the soil. So you'll notice that the foundation of the blockhouse is actually using a different kind of limestone. This is probably more either fence post limestone, which is the upper layer of the greenhorn formation, which we looked at earlier this week. Um, so you can see that the lower foundation here had to be sort of repaired with some of the different uh, more resistant limestone blocks. Um, as you can see here, the Fort Hayes limestone is pretty, um, well, it's dissolving. It's not very resistant. So it turns out that it's not such a great building material, especially when your foundation is based upon Fort Hayes limestone. So what is limestone, Reese? How do we explain what limestone is? I said it represents deep marine environment. So that means all of the sand has settled out. All of the fine clay particles and dust particles have settled out. So does that mean that limestone is made of lime? You put the lime in the coconut, shake it all around. It kind of does. It's made out of calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate. So would that, would that be a tangy, refreshing beverage? Um, Crisp, clean, no, but no it, but it would help get rid of your gas when you eat it, you know, in so your, in calcium your calcium carbonate. Turns out that the seaway was inhabited by microorganisms called coccolithophores and coccolithophores had calcium or do you say carbonate? Carbonate, calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate, hard parts, calcium hard parts. And they would live, they would die, their little hard parts would fall to the ocean floor, and that would create what we call calcareous ooze, which is the really mushy sort of muck at the bottom of the deep ocean. And 
over time and uh, with a lot of pressure and probably some heat there, it fossilizes into limestone, which is a carbonate rock, in this case, calcium carbonate. So it's actually made up of all of the microskeletons, for lack of better words, of these microorganisms, these coccolithophores, that inhabited the water column in the seaway. So that is your constant source of sediment. If you think we would be standing in the deepest, this would represent one of the deeper um, cycles of the seaway. Um, so this would have been probably when the sea was one of its deepest points. So anywhere between about 600 feet to maybe even up to a thousand feet deep. So, Which is a caveat because deep ocean, you know, can go down miles when you go out to get into yeah, trenches. But yeah. this would be distant from the, the coastline and deeper water than normal. That's why I always say the inland seaway was, was relatively shallow. And what I mean is relative to some of the modern oceans that we have today where you've got miles and miles and miles of ocean before you hit the seafloor. So, you know, in some cases we're talking trenches. What, the Titanic is what, two and a half miles down? So the only way to, to get there is sending submarines down there if you're really adventurous. Uh, there's no light and the pressure is extreme down there. So, you know, it would be um, deep enough that no light would probably really, it would be dark. It would be very dark. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, compared to today's oceans, it would be relatively shallow. Relatively shallow. Exactly. Hundreds of feet if, you know, compared to miles, maybe a thousand feet. So, again, you've got a really cool cross section here of natural history meets uh, U.S. history here. Uh, so this served uh, as the blockhouse for Fort Hayes, for old Fort Hayes when this was uh, an outpost. Um, for a while there, Fort uh, Hayes and the city, Hayes City, was sort of the terminus of the railroad for a while there uh, until it went further west. Um, so uh, I could get into the history of Fort Hayes and, and this area of Kansas if anybody's interested, uh, but I'm not going to do that today. So if there is interest, I saw that some people commented that there should be a historical tour of Western Kansas in with some of this natural history that I've been doing. Um, if there's interest, throw that interest in the uh, comments section. And if there's enough interest, I will definitely consider doing something like that where I combine natural history with, with U.S. history and Kansas history specifically. So, um, See, I'm again, sorry, but I still think this is fascinating when you get to places where you got all the burrows. Yeah, so what we're talking about is invertebrate critters burrowing through what would have been at the time soft seafloor and leaving these traces, these tunnels behind, which then later get infilled by other, mm -hmm. other critters. Sediment. This is interesting. Mm -mm -mm. That's something. Uh, looks like a big seashell in there. I don't want to pull things out of the wall because this is a historic structure and I don't want to. So as far as, uh, you know, fossils that have come out of the, the Ford Hayes formation, there have been, uh, I know there are some Mosasaur material that has been discovered. Um, and lots of Inoceramus. Lots of clams. Um, probably some shark's teeth. Um, but it tends to get overshadowed, overlaid, ha ha ha, by the stuff that comes out of the Smoky Hill chalk formation, which is sort of the, the younger, upper section of the Niobrara. So uh, a lot of the big fossils that we have on display come from the upper section of the Niobrara formation. So, Did you know that do, JFK was here? JFK was here. What was he doing here? Oh, I think he, I think he toured here on a campaign. I'm not sure. Huh? Interesting. And I thought he served overseas. Um, so good example of people making use of the native material here. Although 
as it turns out, this is not very resistant to dissolution. So, and part part of the reason for that is that this limestone got chewed up a bunch by a bunch of critters. You can see again, all of these are burrows with animals chewing this up, and so it got mixed up a lot. And there's a little bit more um, clay clay stuff that's mixed in with the limestone, which makes it a little bit easier. So if this was a burrow, yep. we're supposing. It was a burrow. What would have happened is, you know, there would have been the, the tunnel that the critter made through this. And then after that critter was gone and the tunnel was just left empty, it was infilled with different material that was maybe, in this case, more resistant than the material that surrounded it. So that's how you end up with these casts of the burrow. A lot of times the animals that are making the burrows, sometimes they're shrimp, sometimes they're different types of worms. They will leave sort of an organic uh, uh, layer or film behind them that helps solidify the burrow so that if it's a living burrow, they stay in there and they move back and forth all the time. And other times they're just feeding traces where they're just going through, munching on the sediment, pooping it out the back end and just leaving uh, a trail as opposed to actually having a, a domicile or a, a home. So there's, um, and one of the things that is interesting is the more oxygen there is at the, at the bottom, the more their animals will be burrowing up the sediment. And when you get into lower oxygen levels, then there's, a, the animals can't burrow as deeply. Like this guy was probably, here's the, probably the start of the burrow was up about this high. So you can sort of figure out the depth of burrowing, which tells you a lot about the environment that the animals were living in. So uh, oxygen levels, the amount of food that was available with the organics, and there's tons of organics because it's all lots of uh, dead uh, microorganisms that fell to the bottom. So it's a whole universe down here, a whole community of different sorts of invertebrates that were living in the limestone which is kind of a cool thing. And we can actually do, we can figure out diversity of, of life and sort of uh, how much oxygen there, there was by how deep the burrows are. And after we got very far into the, uh, deeper and deeper in the Niobrara, we started losing uh, some more oxygen because things started having to live at the surface and weren't burrowing down nearly as deeply when we get deeper into the Niobrara. But it's really cool. So a lot of history in these rocks, both deep time and not so long ago. So we've got stuff here from, well, you know, probably, probably the early 1900s, late 1800s, all the way up to probably modern times. Hopefully, I would like to think that uh, kids aren't up here defacing property, but you know that might be too much hope to have. Yeah. We got 97. 97. <laughs> Gosh, Reese, that was 20 years ago. Of course, we got 22. 22? Yeah. 7, 23, 22? That would be 1922. That would be 1922. Whereas, whereas the burrows down here, go back a little bit older. There's a really, you can see some really nice ones here. All right, so let's go to a place where there's shade so I can see if anybody, anybody have any questions? Let's see. Oh, great. Went to Fort Hayes. Yeah, a lot of the buildings on uh, uh, the Fort Hayes campus uh, are probably made from limestone. My guess is they're made from the uh, um, post rock or fence post limestone, which is the upper layer, as I've said, of the Greenhorn Formation. Would there be any interest if I were to... Um, sort of explore what post rock and fence post limestone is all about because I was thinking I might do that tomorrow if if there's interest um, again you know just uh, really sort of a unique Kansas thing um, I hadn't seen a whole lot of uh, limestone structures coming from the Northwest um, because well certainly in the region that I'm from all we've got is basalt so you know occasionally you'd see 
basalt used in architecture, but not like this. Um, so there's a cross section of a clamshell there. That's pretty cool. In some senses, the, uh, the building is a, a better outcrop than a lot of outcrops are because you have it stacked all on top of each other. You don't get it in, in its original stratigraphy, but you do get some nice cross sections to see a lot of different fossils um, sort of as they were in place, which is kind of a cool opportunity. All right. Well, do we have anything else to add that we want to say about our Fort Hayes limestone? Well, it's, you know, it, it was one of the only building materials that was out here as the, the military and the pioneers came out this direction. And so they made use of it. And now it's actually a really good, fun thing for historical value as well as prehistorical value well, for understanding the history of life. It's a very unique, uh, unique to this region kind of thing. I remember coming out here, seeing all of those limestone fence posts, wondering what that was about, you know, and it's funny because I didn't say it out loud because I didn't want to embarrass myself because I just wasn't sure. But my mother uh, had a, a husband who was from Ireland and he was uh, out visiting this way. Um, and he kept saying, you know, wow, a lot of people must have died along the, uh, the trails here with all of these, all of these monuments, these gravestones. And we kind of laughed because, well, yeah, that's kind of what it looked like. And, you know, in Ireland, that's not so strange of an idea because Ireland is, is really kind of cool. Uh, you'll find all sorts of like rock cairns where, where they make these pile of rocks, you know, that are ancient, mm -hmm. thousands of years old, made by people who had lived there before. And, you know, it's assumed that those are burials. Um, so, you know, the Irish, they just leave them, you know, so you'll see these, you know, farmed fields where, you know, they'll, they'll obviously be farming the fields, but they won't touch the area where the rock cairns are. They'll just work around it. And they're very, uh, I don't know if superstitious is the word, but they, they just don't bother them because they know what they are. So, you know, that observation was a very interesting one because it comes from, you know, somebody from a different country with a little bit different of a culture. And he's assuming that that's just markers where, you know, over time people have died and they're buried, which is kind of an interesting point of view. And that's sort of what I thought when I first came to, they do look like tombstones, especially when the barbed wire is gone. So you don't realize they're fence posts. Right. So a very, very unique um, part of this, of this um, region. And if there's interest, like I said, uh, we can explore what, what uh, that fence post limestone is all about. So I guess we will, uh, instead of dragging this on and boring people, we will uh, sign off for today. And we want to sign off before we get back around to the really windy side. And you won't be able to hear anything. Yes, uh, this worked out well for us because this gives us a shelter from the wind. Uh, like I said, I was out driving around just west of here looking for the type section of Fort Hayes Limestone and uh, we found a couple of outcrops but I didn't feel like they were good enough to illustrate what we needed to. So then we both looked at each other and went, wait a minute, let's just go to Fort Hayes that used the limestone that it was named after, <laughs> that the limestone was named actually after the fort right. to, uh, to build the blockhouse here. And so that's what we ended up doing. So strange little world we work in. So blockhouse right on the golf course right on the golf course and actually the military reservation was very vast it was very expansive so it would have really been much larger um, so anyways we're gonna we're gonna sign off today i'm ian and i'm reese and we uh like always ask that you like and share our posts feel free to send us comments and we will be on tomorrow have a great day and stay healthy and happy. We'll talk to you later.